Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with rock, Americana, jazz, country, and pop singer and songwriter, and also a rabbi, Stephen Blaine. He talked about his upcoming 2018 CD entitled So New York, and it's scheduled for release in September of 2018. It's a collection of original songs about New York City. As a young boy in Jersey City, his grandma stood him on a table at a talent show singing Delilah, Tom Jones style, in front of a supportive audience that left a profound impact on him. These days, he writes and performs in the rock, Americana, country, pop genres, and his songs and lyrics reflect the musings on relationships, faith, love, and fantasy, and over the years, he has had quite a journey. So please get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Stephen, thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. I appreciate it. I appreciate the uh, the interview and the opportunity. It's always good to talk to people about what Absolutely. I'm doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're you're a very interesting mix of personas and pursuits and vocations, so I'm looking forward to delving into uh, all of those to get a better better view of who you are and and what's going on with your music. So, to begin, let's yeah. get into your newest CD that's coming out in September. So New York is the name of it. Talk to me about this album. You don't stick to one genre. You kind of have different things blended in. So give me an idea about this album, and we'll move on from there. Well, you know, it's kind of a what you just said. It's kind of a it's kind of a curse. Artists uh, sort of uh, uh, hate getting pigeonholed into a particular genre. Um, at least, at least I do, because I, I could have a palette of uh, of sounds in my head, and of course, I've got the breadth of my life experience. So I've been exposed to a lot of genres. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't. I don't like to write in any particular uh, one. But regardless, so New York is uh, seems to be a, um, a kind of a pop vocal jazz genre, where uh, you know uh, the songs that I that I compiled for so New York, or that I curated rather, are um, they're love songs to New York City. Uh, I, I live in New York, and um, and I love this. I write every day, and some of my songs are, are pretty good, and some don't don't make it. Uh, more than a day, <laughs> to be honest with you, just like many other writers. But but what I noticed was that that um, when it came to New York, I, I felt I could inject um, all kinds of um, stories uh, that uh, were kind of cool. So uh, there, a couple of the tunes are are, are, are kind of a, a, a noir setting, you know, that old uh, that old 1940s black and white romantic uh, romantic story style. A couple of them, I could, I, I just, they just, they're just the, the chord structures and the lyrics are just so um, uh, pop, but but pop jazz, almost like you know, like New York, New York, you know, uh, like that. Too. When I put them all together, I realized that this was kind of, this would be kind of interesting because um, I, I had enough songs uh, that I could, I could uh, do a kind of a concept album on. You know, you grew up in Jersey City. I did, and. You were watching a talent show with your grandma. Talk to me about that flashpoint for you and kind of about your childhood. Well, well, well Joe, you know, I was about, I don't know, seven or eight years old uh, when that happened. Yeah, but, it, but it's funny, when you, when you look back on your life, certain memories seem to, to pop out at you. And that one was very profound. I remember being there in that room and getting, actually, I think I was on a table and I had just finished watching the Tom Jones show. So that, actually, Tom Jones was like 1968. So I, I was uh, I was about 12 even then, 11 or 12. And I remember listening to that song, Delight. You remember that song, My, 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 Delight? <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah. was that was big, uh, you know, in, in my in my uh, my days because I wasn't uh, I wasn't into the animals or, or the stones or, or anything like that. I was listening to Tom Jones. So I sang that in talent show. And the, and the reaction that I got was was killer. People people loved it. And in hindsight, I mean, I think it was just the fact that any kid standing up on a table singing a, a song, a pop song from Tom Jones, was was bound to get some adulation. Uh, but for me, it was profound. And then um, and then subsequently, uh, when I look back on that from where I am now, I, I just you know I'm 61. I just realized that that was that was the beginning of my of my journey. At this point, I, I finally kind of figured out what style I, I love to uh, sing in and, and how to sing and how to craft songs. I've, I've finally put it all together. It's only taken that this long. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while, and it's certainly never too late. So you moved down to the village, 
Yeah. And, you know, you get involved with Broadway and you're yeah. in the cauldron of, of probably the cultural uh, goodness that the world has to offer. Talk to me about what that was like for you. Well, you know, New York was uh, was like it was like an escape, you know, because growing up in Jersey City, it was it was very urban and uh, it was very neighborhoody. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, kind of uh, blue collar uh, working working kids, uh, people of color. It was it was a wonderful mixing pot to grow up in. Uh, when I finally got out of college and I got and I and I got to New York City, that was a whole other world. And finally, being on my own, a hundred percent, and and then. Um, I always wanted to write songs. That's all I wanted to do. But somehow I, I, I got lucky, and I, I was going out for auditions. Uh, and, and this 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 call, even I remember that it was they were looking for singer uh, musicians, singer uh, a singer yeah singer instrumentalist. And I went over for this call, and I got I got hired to be a gypsy uh, and a horse. And I didn't even know what, what I was doing. And all of a sudden, it was on off Broadway, and then and then it, it was on Broadway. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. and I was 22 or 23, and I thought, wow, okay, well, this is going to be my career. I'm going to be uh, an, a Broadway uh, actor. But after that show, uh, there was nothing else for me. So I drifted back into songwriting, and then that, that you know, I just spent years uh, in my apartment smoking cigarettes and, and, and being very angsty and artsy and trying to send my songs out to get them covered, and, and nothing happened. And then I had a life, and then and then I had another life where I raised a family. And then it was only five years ago that I decided I was going to be serious about my songwriting career. And to date, this is my sixth album, and and I really feel um, I feel I feel very strong now. I, I feel like I have a great catalog, and I can go. I'm, I have a gig tonight, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to play. And the guitar sounds the way I want it. Uh, the, the 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 way that I do the songs are, are right. I've got. 70 or 80 tunes that I could call on at any time that, that you know, that I, mostly you want to do up-tempo stuff, but when I hit them with a ballad, it's, I, in other words, I feel really strong now. I'm ready, I'm ready for anything. I can, I can get up there with anyone and do a show that I think people will, uh, will enjoy. Before we depart that early part of your life, you yep. move to Nashville, load up your blue VW bug, fall in love, become an audiobook producer, so yeah. how did things kind of evolve from that point into coming back to New York, and how did all that happen? Well, I actually never, I never moved to Nashville. That's part of that's 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 the fork in the road. I got in the car to drive to Nashville, and I drove about a hundred miles or even less, and then I just chickened out, and I turned around and I went home. In hindsight, I either would have, if I look at it now, I mean that was thirty-five years ago. Nashville at that time was a little bit more accessible for songwriting, and, and people were really covering songs. And my skills were, you know, they were not that not that strong. But I wonder if I would have developed into a, a, a better songwriter. It doesn't matter. There's no reason to look back. Um, uh, I did not make it to Nashville. I, I just didn't. Now I, I go kind of regularly. I'm going again at the end of August, just because I love being with with great great country and bluegrass bluegrass musicians and listening to that stuff. It's just so um, uh, so up. And it makes you feel good. And, uh, and yeah. I love that. So you're a rabbi too, correct? I am. So how, how does all that fit into your not only kind of realistic id, but also your creative side? I kind of compartmentalize them. Being, uh, the, the rabbinic uh, career is still active and vital and, and I have, I've, I've developed um, you know, a, a place in, in, in the Jewish world because I have this online uh, synagogue where where I do a service every Friday night. But I've been able to, uh, even though they're 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 separate and distinct, and then there's the singer songwriter part. I, I, I find ways to, to bridge them. Uh, for example, on the Friday night service, uh, was that, that that I've got about 100 or 150 or 200 people around the world that that join me every Friday night. But prior to the service starting from 7 to 8 p.m., from 6.30 to 7, I'm doing a set of my stuff. <laughs> you know? so hmm. I'm doing, doing my tunes or a couple of covers or anything. And that's kind of a, for me, it's, it, the whole thing is very spiritual. And, and, and I think of performances as, as being very spiritual as well. So it, as much as they are separate, they, they, they do converge. I, I, you know, songs can, are very, can be very prayer-like, even if, even if they're, 
not slow and mournful. You know, it's it's really the content of the song, the the the, the lyric and and the uh, the uh, the the performance behind it. So they they do kind of, they they're separate but they merge. So are you happy with how everything's turned out? You have you've come back to music. You have six albums. Mm-hmm. You you have had a long career up to this point. Are you happy with how everything's turned out? Joe, I'm 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 totally blessed. We just we just had a, a little granddaughter. I mean, you know, and and life is life is just brilliant. Um, I've got a gig tonight. The, the thing that I aspire to, honestly, is to uh, have the opportunity to uh, perform uh, my material for for just you know small groups of people that that are there to actually listen. Uh, you know, as opposed, you know, I'm getting a lot of gigs now, honestly, and and we're uh, you know kind of. Uh, uh, millennial joints and, uh, you know, young, young people stuff. But, you know, it's their hour sets and people are busy, you know, either munching in the background or, or drinking and talking. And it's not that, it's not that jazz room kind of a thing where everybody shuts up for a set and literally listens to you. So uh, what I aspire to is to find, um, you know, gigs like that. That, that's really all I'm looking for. And it doesn't have to be, uh, honestly, 10 people would be good. You know, so. Sure. And, it's, sure. hard, it, it's hard to get there. It's very hard to get there. Since this is a jazz show, I'm curious to know, yeah. what kind of jazz music have you listened to that's really swayed you? What musicians or albums really got you going? Well, as, you know, as, as, a, as a vocalist, you know, my ear, of course, goes to, um, to, um, to vocalists. I, I don't want to be cliche in any way, but honestly... Sinatra just, he continually blows me away. It's just, the, the more I listen to him, the, 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 he was just, he was just so brilliant. And then of course Tony Bennett, um, you know, the great classic singers and of course the great songwriters, you know, the Julie Steins and, and the, um, uh, and the Irving Berlins and then Jerome Kearns. And, and, and these people were craftsmen. I mean, they, they they wrote it, but but they were businesslike about it. They sat down and they just like the, the people in Nashville, they wrote these tunes, and then these great singers interpreted their tunes. So that's where my ear goes. And for that reason, uh, if you listen to uh, to my song, even if the songs on So New York, they've got melodies and they've got strong lyrics. And I don't I don't find that um, no, no matter who I listen to today. Even you know any of the great artists that are still performing, they're doing covers. They're not, or if they're doing originals, honestly, I find the material is is, is lacking. It's just not crafted that well. Um, I, I also wonder if if maybe the consumer's ears are not are not in a place where they they appreciate those great lyrics. At least at least the the younger generation. You know, I'm hoping there's opportunity for for well crafted uh, jazz tunes to uh, vocal jazz. Look, the instrumental stuff, I, I get it. The whole thing, it's it's wonderful. I I go to the local clubs and I I love listening to the instrumentalists. But it, none of that does it for me as much as as hearing uh, a singer, uh, you know, with with a duo or a trio or a quartet and doing their thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. let me ask you this: Everyone has a version of you. Yeah. Your family, your friends, yeah. you know, uh, your fans, but you know yourself best. Who do you think you are? Well, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a rabbi, and I'm a, um, and I'm a songwriter. And if you ask me which is more significant or more important, I couldn't tell you that. Um, I could tell you that, uh, you know, artistically, I, I'm, I'm both. And of course, and then, and then I, I have a brilliant family. I have an amazing family. So you know, I don't want to. I'm not discounting that, but I'm ter- in terms of the artistic parts of my life, they are they're equal, but they um, but they're they're both supremely important to me. Uh, I hope that answers your question. It does, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And with that, Steven, thank you for opening up about the new album. Good luck with it. Thanks for opening up about your life. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for your time. I appreciate the interview. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Nashville, New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz and all that music. And thanks to Stephen for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Not the Bronx or Stan in Central Park, Manhattan, in New York. 
Neon Jazz.